Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Of who you are in this place, Father, we shout, Hallelujah! 
Lord. Hallelujah for your glory. Hallelujah for your restoration. Hallelujah, Lord. Oh, come on, everybody, give him a shout of praise. Somebody give him a shout of praise. Come on, give him a shout of praise. Oh, arise, arise, mighty ones in me. 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 Arise, arise, mighty ones. Come on, the chorus. Arise, arise, mighty ones. Arise, 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 mighty ones in me. 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 Lift up your hand, oh ye gates. Lift up your hand, oh ye gates. Be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. Oh, lift up your head, oh ye gates. Lift up your head, oh ye gates. Be lifted up, ye everlasting doors. Oh, that strength at the front of the hey, strength at the front, strength at the gate, strength at the gate of the battle. That strength at the gate, strength at the gate, strength at the gate of the battle. Strength at the gate of the battle. That strength at the gate. Strength at the gate. Strength at the gate of the battle. Strength at the gate of the battle. There's strength at the gate. Lift up your head on your gates. Lift up your head on your gates. Lift 
empower you to overtake. He strengthens you. He lifts you to overtake, to overcome.
is a good God. Praise him. We thank him for the blood that redeems us. We thank him for who he is, that there's strength in the blood. We overcome in the blood. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. I thank God for the opportunity today to stand before you. And last week, Apostle talked about, you can be seated. Last week, Apostle talked about the blood being redeemed. Ephesians 1 and 7, in whom we have redemption through his blood, the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. And so I'm going to be talking today about being covered in the blood of Jesus, being covered by God, because we need God's covering in everything that we do. So I'm going to pray, and then we'll get right to it. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning. We lay everything at your feet, O oh God. And we cry out to you this morning, O oh God, that you would fill us the more with your anointing. Lord, that your word would bring change and shift us out of a place of complacency to a place where we're whole, Father, in you. Lord, that the blood would wash us and cleanse us, O oh God, because it is your word, O oh God. We declare today, O oh God, that Holy Spirit will have his way, that we come today expecting something to happen, expecting a change, expecting you to show up. Lord, you said in your word that Holy Spirit leads and guides us into all truth, that he speaks not of himself, but he speaks of what he hears the Father say. So, Lord, we release that today, and we welcome Holy Spirit, our paraclete. We welcome him today. Begin to welcome Holy Spirit. Whatever you have need of today in the blood of Jesus, that you would find it today, that you would not leave here the same, that the blood would begin to cleanse that area in your life, that the blood would begin to sustain you and strengthen you as never before. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Well, I want to start with the definition of covered. Covered means putting something on top of or in front of, especially in order to protect or to conceal, extend over to clothe, covered. So when we're covered, we're protected. We're concealed from the enemy. We're extended. God clothes us with grace, righteousness, because of the blood of Jesus. He created us in his image, so therefore we're covered. We, we're covered when we do what God says. Now I'm going to give you a little context to covered and how God moved covering his people, covering the land. The God that creates covers. The God that creates covers. In Genesis 1 and 27, it tells us, so God created man in his own image. and image, God created he him. Male and female created he them. And God blessed them, and God said to them, be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth and subdue it and have dominion over the fish of the sea and over the fowl of the air and over every living thing that moveth upon the earth. And God said, Behold, I've given you every herb bearing seed, which is upon the face of all the earth, and every tree in that which is the fruit of the tree yielding seed, to you it shall be for meat. Verse 30. And to every beast of the earth, and to every fowl of the air, and to everything that creepeth upon the earth, wherein there is life, I have given every green herb for meat, and it was so. And so... When we look at the scripture, this passage of scripture, we see that when you're covered by the creator, when you're covered by the blood, you are fruitful, you multiply, you're subdued. God gives you things. There's, there's a giving that takes place. And then we look at the covenant that he made with Abraham. In Genesis 12, he says, I will show you the land. I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. I will make your name great. You will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and I will curse those who curse you. Covered. Abraham was covered by God. 
In Genesis 22, 17, it says the blessings. I will bless thee and multiply. I will multiply thee. Seed as the stars of the heaven and as the sand which is upon the seashore and, the, and, the, and thy seed shall prosper the gate of his enemies. Multiplication, blessings, land. God protects you from your enemy. He said he will take care of those who curse you. So when we talk about covering, God covers us. And in his covering, there are all these things that God does by the blood of Jesus. Verse 18 says, and the seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. See, there's a stipulation to God's word and God covering us. See, we have to do what God said. Abraham did what God said. Abraham followed God. And it was accounted unto him as righteousness. The blood speaks. The blood has a voice. And then we look at Jesus. Jesus was covered by God. And then in turn, Jesus covered us by the blood. John 3, 17 says, God did not send the son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. Matthew 20 and 28 says, even as the son of man come not to be ministered unto but to minister and to give his life for ransom for many. Romans 8 and 3 says, For what the law could not do, in that it was weak through the flesh, God sending his own son in likeness and sinful flesh, and for sin condemned the sin in the flesh, that all the righteousness of the law might be fulfilled in us, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. And so there's some walking that we have to do. We have to walk after the spirit of God. It's in the blood of Jesus. Jesus covers. And so we have to understand that, that we have to do some things. There's some things that we have to be obedient to, to be covered. But God is faithful and true to his word. He said that he would cover us. He covered the creation. Then he made the, the covenant with Abraham. And then he brought Jesus to clean it all up because we weren't properly covered. And some of us today are not properly covered. Some of us think we're covered, but we're not properly covered. Part of us is covered. Half of us is covered. A portion of us is covered. But God wants to cover all of us, every bit of us. Apostle talked last week about the blood. The blood is all over us. The blood is running through our body. It covers everything. And so we need the covering of the blood of Jesus. Again, covered means protect, conceal, extend, and clothe. We have to stay covered by the blood. The problem is, is that we're not covered enough. We're covered when we do it God's way. When we listen to his voice, when we listen to the voice of Holy Spirit, when we listen to the prophetic word, when we listen and read our word, because the word speaks, the blood speaks. Being covered by the word. John 1, 14 says, and the word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory, the glory as of the begotten of the father, full of grace and truth. Numbers 9 and 16, so it, was, so it was always the cloud covered it by day and the appearance of the fire by night. Psalms 85 and 2, thou hast forgiven the iniquity of the people, thou hast covered all their sins. We are covered when we're under the blood of Jesus. Anything we have need of, anything that we ask God for, it's in the blood. But the problem is that we have need of things that God didn't intend for us to have need of. And so we don't see these things come to fruition. We don't see these things come to pass because we're, in, we're, not, we're not walking under the covering. And because we're not walking under the covering, we can't fulfill our purpose and destiny in God. With the covering of God, there's blessings. The blood of Jesus covers us. It brings blessings. 
Ezekiel 34 and 26, I will make them a place around my hill, a blessing. And I will cause showers to come down in their season, and they will be showers of blessings. Deuteronomy 7 and 14, ye shall be blessed above all people. There will be no male nor female barren among you or among your cattle. When we're covered under the blood of Jesus, we're no longer barren. Some of us have things that God is trying to birth in us, but we're barren because we're not covered under the blood. God's trying to take away the barrenness, but we have to stay covered under the blood of Jesus. So what's in your womb? What does God want to put in your womb? What does God want to pregnate with you with? What does God want to bring forth? It can only be brought forth under the covering of the blood. The problem is we're trying to have babies through uh, 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 religious ways, through medicine, all these different things. Fertilization. Trying to do it ourselves. We have to be under the blood in order to receive the blessings. Deuteronomy 28 and 6 says, Blessed shall thou be when thou comest in, and blessed shall thou be when thou goest out. Wherever you go, the blood will follow you. No, better yet, you will follow the blood if you cover. If you covered, you hear. You know the voice of God, so you follow the blood. If the blood says don't go there, then you don't go there. What is the blood? The Holy Spirit. Because Jesus said that he could not, if he didn't leave, the comforter would not come. The word of God tells us who leads us into all truth. Holy Spirit. So we end up going in and out of places that are not sanctioned or ordained by God. And we pick up things that causes us to disconnect from the blood. But we have to go in and out by way of Holy Spirit, by way of the blood. We have to hear the voice of God. Psalms 128 and 4 says, Behold, thus shall Thy man be blessed who fears the Lord. We've lost our fear of the Lord. This age, this season, we've lost the fear of the Lord. And we want to follow God. We want to follow the blood when it feels good to us, when everything is going okay. We let him go. We don't need God. We don't need the blood. But as soon as we get in trouble, as soon as something happens, we want to get under the blood. We want to be covered by the blood. We pick and choose when to follow God and when not to follow him. And God is saying not so. He wants us to follow him all the time. He wants us to be covered under the blood all the time. We have to allow God to completely cover us. Genesis 2 and 5 says, And every plant of the field before it was in the earth, and every herb of the field before it grew, for the Lord God had caused it to rain, had not caused it to rain upon the earth, and there was not a man to till the ground. Covered. God covered his creation. Genesis 2 and 6 says, but there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. I'm going somewhere with this. And when we're covered by the blood, everything in God is easy. Everything is seamless. Holy Spirit will lead and guide us. It just happens organically. But when we're not covered by the blood, when we're not walking under the blood of Jesus, we struggle. We have difficulty. We have challenges. We go through trials and tribulations that God didn't even intend for us to go through had we just followed the blood. And the scripture tells us in Genesis 2 and 5, and the Lord God had not caused it to rain upon the earth. And there was not a man to till the ground. God didn't need man. When we're covered under the blood, God don't need us. 
We can't do anything unless he tells us. Because we will not be successful if we don't do it under the blood. We'll fail if we don't do it under the blood. So God created the garden. He sustained it. And he didn't need man to sustain the garden. There was no tilling of the ground. He had no man to till the ground. There was no water. He doesn't need our help to sustain his plan. When we're under the blood. Why? Because we're following his word. He knows that we're doing it. So he doesn't need our help. Because we're being obedient to what he told us to do. I looked up the word tilling. And it's simply turning over and breaking up soil. God didn't need us to break up anything. Because he was the creator. He covered everything. He had everything covered. He had how high the grass was going to grow covered. What the animals' names were going to be, he had it covered. He had everything covered. He, had, he knew what Adam and Eve had need of. Just like he knows what we have need of. When we're under the blood of Jesus, he knows what we have need of. So what happens? Genesis 2 and 6 says, but there went up a mist from the earth and watered the whole face of the ground. When we're covered under the blood, God will water every need that you have. Everything that you have under the blood will be covered. He will sustain it. He will bring provision for everything. We don't need anything but to trust God. When we're covered under the blood of Jesus, the blood speaks. The mist covered. And I looked up the word mist. It says cover, become covered with mist. A cloud of tiny water droplets suspended in the atmosphere at or near the earth's suffer, surface that limits visibility. When, the, when God covered the garden with the mist, and he wants to cover you with the mist, because in the blood there is mist. And you don't need to see where you're going because God is carrying you. God is covering you. God is guiding you. God is leading you. The problem is that we want to see where we're going. But when God is sending the mist, when God is watering every need, when God is sustaining every need, we don't need to see. We have to trust God. We have to trust the blood. God supplies every need. Every need. What do you have need of today? And you have to ask yourself, are you covered under the blood? Because God said if you have need of it and it's a part of your purpose and destiny, it will surely come to pass. Some of the things that we're doing, some of the things that we're saying are not coming to pass because we're not under the blood of Jesus. So Adam and Eve shifted out of a place from covered to uncovered. And we have shifted out of a place of being covered to uncovered in God in some areas in our lives. Some things we have down pat, we don't have a problem with, but there's areas where we're struggling with. And God wants to deal with those areas today. He wants those areas covered under the blood of Jesus. He wants those things sustained in him. He wants us delivered and healed and set free. So we can't live an uncovered life. We can't afford to live uncovered. We can't afford to shift into a place of being uncovered. Genesis 2 and 25 says, and they were both naked, the man and his wife, and they were not ashamed. They were not ashamed. When you're covered, 
you're not ashamed. Everything is transparent. You have no secrets. You're not hiding. There's no reputation to defend. But when we're uncovered, we're not transparent. We keep secrets. We hide things. We want to defend our reputation. And we have no reputation. That's how you know you're not covered. When you get in a place, when you got to defend yourself, when you got to say, oh, my reputation is at stake. But in Christ, we don't have a reputation. Under the blood, we don't have a reputation. When we're covered under the blood of Jesus, we're fearless, we're bold, we're secure, we're confident, we're unshakable, unmovable. And we're not led away. Adam and Eve was led away. We have to deal with the things on the inside of us that would cause us to be led away. What is pulling you away from the blood? What is causing you to become uncovered? We cannot cont continue to go into a place in God in 2022 uncovered. Every area of our life needs to be covered under the blood. So all our secrets, all those hidden agendas, all those hidden things, all our idols. When we're uncovered, we have idols. We worship idols. We're not transparent. We keep secrets. We don't want to be exposed. But when we're covered under the blood... Nothing matters because God's got you. Adam and Eve started to move from the covering of God to a place called uncovered. Eve allowed the voice of entertainment to sway her away. It brought interference intrusion and disruption when we move from up under the covering of God when we're not covered by the blood we're being entertained by something else we got interference working we got an intrusion that has come on the scene we have disruption because when that when we're not covered under the blood We open ourselves up for the attack of the enemy, for the woes of life to take us out. But under the blood, we're covered. And so some of us today have interference working in that situation. You have an intrusion working in that situation. You have a disruption working in that situation because you haven't put it under the blood of Jesus. Put it under the blood. Lay it at the altar. We have allowed what we entertain to cause us to become uncovered under the blood. Entertainment. Looked up the meaning of entertainment. The action of providing or being provided with amusement and enjoyment. Event, performance, activity, designed to entertain others. Apostle talked about this last week. All this extra stuff that we got going, all these extra activities instead of following Jesus. We're entertaining ourselves with other things. It also says the action of receiving a guest or a guest and providing them food and drink. Unhealthy conversations, social media, TV, work working, gossip, etc. But the one definition I want to point out here is the action of receiving a guest or a guest. When we entertain things that are not covered under the blood, first it's a guest. In the garden, when Satan showed up, 
where he wasn't supposed to be, where Eve wasn't supposed to be, in my opinion. He was a guest talking to her. He had no right to speak to her. She had no right to entertain what he had to say. They didn't have a relationship. He was just an acquaintance. And some of us have allowed our acquaintances to entertain us. We've allowed our guests to entertain us. We've allowed other things to entertain us. We cannot allow these things to continue to entertain us. Because the voice of the enemy is speaking through the entertainment. And as he's speaking, you're being drawn away. You're being wooed away little by little. And before you know it, the covering is here. And we end up listening, continue to listen, and we end up over here. But my covering is right here. If I stay right there, no matter what the enemy brings, no matter what it looks like, no matter what it sounds like, no matter how it feels, if I stay over here, I'm covered under the blood. But the problem is, is that we listen to the things that entertain us, the things that make us feel good the things that we like. And so we start stepping out from under the blood. And then the enemy has free reign to do what he wants to do to us because we're no longer covered. We're no longer protected. The covering is off now. But we think we got it handled. But that voice, Speaking to us. When we're uncovered, there is no protection. Uncovered means not covered, having no cover or protection. So we're not protected. The enemy, when I'm over here, can throw anything at me. But when I'm over here, I'm praying, I'm reading my word, I'm going to church, I'm building relationships in God, I'm doing what God told me to do. So when the enemy gets ready to attack, God says, Holy Spirit says, there's an attack coming. Do this, do that. Go here, go there. Say this, say that. Fast three days, fast 21 days. When I'm covered, God will begin to speak to you on what is happening in your life or what is getting ready to happen through dreams, through a prophetic word. He'll give it to someone else. That's why we are to assemble ourselves together because people can see things on you sometimes that others cannot see. And he will give them to pray for you. And so when we're covered, God speaks the voice speaks, the blood speaks to us and tells us exactly what we need to do. The sons of Issachar knew the signs. They knew the times. They knew the seasons. Why? Because they were covered. But when we're uncovered, we're confused. We can't hear clearly. We're double-minded. We're led away by every wind and doctrine. Our hearing becomes desensitized. Our spirit becomes desensitized. Why? Because we're feeding the entertainment. Apostle told us last week we were disqualified when we don't stay under the blood. When we're not covered under the blood, we're disqualified. We're disqualified when we start to listen to other things that are not covered under the blood. Eve disqualified herself by listening to the enemy. She stayed there long enough for him to plant a seed. She stopped. Entertainment is going to come, but we can't stop. We have to keep moving. Jesus kept moving. God keeps moving. We have to stop. When we start to entertain that spirit, we stop and we listen. We stop and we listen. We stop and we listen. If Eve would have kept moving to what God told her to do, she wouldn't have been entertained. But we want to stop and take in. We want to stop and listen 
We want to stop and enjoy the amusement. We want to stop and enjoy the performance. We want to stop and enjoy the event, the activity. But God said, I didn't tell you to go over there. I didn't tell you to do that in this season. I didn't tell you to follow that preacher. I want you to get delivered from, uh, from cancer. or I want you to get delivered from gossip. We over here following a faith message. We over here following supernatural stuff. And God said, no, I told you to work on you in this season. So we become uncovered. So uncovering is just not about us being in sin, um, uh, fornication and things like that. But sometimes it's by our actions, sometimes it's by our disobedience to God that we become uncovered under the blood. So what happened? She heard the enemy speaking and she stopped and listened. We have to stop stopping and listening. We have to listen to the voice of God. The blood speaks. In Genesis 3 and 1, it says, Now the serpent was more suitable than any beast of the field, which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, Yea, have God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden? The enemy entertaining Eve with conversation. What is your entertainment today? What is entertaining you that you're not covered or that area that you so want to be delivered from, you so want to be healed from, you so want God to work in? Is it covered under the blood? Are you hearing God speak what you ought to do about that very thing, that very issue, that very concern? Or are you listening to entertainment. The enemy entertained Eve. And she had to stop in order for him to have such a diverse conversation with her in the garden. In Genesis 3, 6, it says, And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, a tree to be desired to make one wise. She took the fruit thereof and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. When we start to entertain things, we begin to love that thing more than God. And her perspective shifted. Her spiritual eyesight shifted. The food became pleasant when it wasn't before. Why? Because God had given her them a command not to touch it, not to eat it. Now all of a sudden she sees that it looks good to her. All because of an entertaining, a conversation. It's in the word. She saw that the tree was good for food and that it was pleasant to the eyes. When we move from under the covering and allow the voice of entertainment in, it shifts us from the blood. They were covered up until that point. They were covered. God had supplied all their needs. They didn't need anything. They didn't need to even go get no water out of the river to water anything. They didn't need to till the ground. To bring forth food. They had need of nothing. When we're covered, we have need of nothing. God will supply all of our needs. So when we entertain, we start thinking the thing we're entertaining is good for food. We start to lust after because it comes pleasant to our eyes. The more we entertain it, the more we like it, the more we love it. We move from a place of like to love. And Eve fell in love with the tree. She fell in love with the fruit. She 
she took the fruit and did eat and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did eat. When we get under the uh, get from up, up under the covering of Jesus, the blood of Jesus, God, like Eve, we begin to share our entertainment. We become infectious to the body of Christ. We start infecting other people with our sight, with our lust. So she gave it to her husband. What are we sharing that God told us that we shouldn't even be doing? We're entertaining things and then we're ready to go share it. We're ready to go tell the world. We're ready to put it on Facebook, a post, posting stuff on Facebook behind people that are saying things that they shouldn't be saying, but we're entertaining it. God didn't tell you to respond to that. He didn't tell you to respond to this. But we're entertaining it because Facebook has a voice. And the voice is speaking. Social media has a voice. And we follow it. But we have to be careful. Because what you're posting, what you're putting out there, what you're commenting on, what you're putting up a like on, you're feeding others. You're feeding others. And we can't continue to not be covered under the blood, but we cannot afford to be feeding other people with this junk. Eve changed her position because of what she entertained, what she heard. And she was ready to go share it. And if there was probably more of them there, she probably would have shared it with all of them, the whole lot of them. We have to stay covered under the blood of Jesus. And verse 7 says, the eyes of them both were open, and they knew that they were naked. And they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. When you're covered under the blood of Jesus, you don't know that you're naked. You don't know that the enemy is behind you. You don't know that the enemy is on the side. Of you. you don't know where the enemy, where you got a weak spot at, where your armor is weak, where you're uh, hindered at. Because so many things we've done in our lives has caused us to sin. The generational curses has made us vulnerable to the enemy. But when we're covered under the blood, the enemy can't touch this. But we don't know where those areas are. We don't know that June Bug was a warlock. We don't know that Big Mama was a witch. But Holy Spirit will reveal that to you. So we become protected. See, when we're covered under the blood, the enemy can say anything or try and do anything, but we're covered because God's got our back. He knows all of these things. He knows what's working in our generation. He knows what's working in us. He knows the sins that we did. He knows the generational sins that we brought on ourselves to our next generation. He knows all of this. So we stand naked when we're covered under the blood. We have no reputation to defend. We're covered. If the enemy come to my left, I'm covered. If the enemy come to my right, I'm covered. If the enemy comes at me from the south, I'm covered. If the enemy come from me from the north, I'm covered. So we have to be naked before God. Whatever secret thing we got on, going on, whatever hidden, hidden agenda we have, we have to cover it under the blood. And in due time, God will begin to work on us. He'll begin to deliver us. He'll begin to heal us. Naked and not ashamed. We have to be naked before God. When we're covered under the blood, we're naked and not ashamed. We're not ashamed of what the enemy can do. We're not ashamed of what others are saying. We're not ashamed of what I look like. I'm not ashamed about how I feel about myself. I'm not ashamed. 
that I was on drugs. I'm not ashamed that my mother used to beat my, uh, my mother used to beat me. I'm not ashamed. I'm not ashamed that my dad used to beat on my mother. I'm not ashamed that my granddaddy was a drunk. I'm not ashamed that my granddaddy was prejudiced. I'm not ashamed. When I'm naked before God, when I'm covered under the blood, I'm not ashamed. I'm naked and I'm not ashamed. That's what the blood will do. It will cause you, no matter what's going on in your life, you're not ashamed. So when we are not covered, our eyes are opened up to things, realms and things that we should not have entertained. And it shifts our perspective. The last part of that verse 7 says, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. The cover-up. When we get out of the blood of Jesus, away from the blood of Jesus, under the blood of Jesus, no longer covered by the blood of Jesus, we're over here doing all kind of stuff. And then we cover ourselves up. We start to hide our secrets, the things that we're doing, living double lives, uncovered. Looked up the word covered up to conceal something, especially wrongdoing error. When we're not covered under the blood and things start to go crazy, chaos breaks out, we start to be challenged with the woes of life. We start to try and fix it ourselves like Adam and Eve. It says they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. When we're not under the covering of the blood of Jesus, we try to fix things ourselves. That's how you know you're not covered. That's how we know we're not covered when we try to insert our own opinion, our own actions, our own thoughts. We don't pray about it. We don't fast about it. We don't seek God about it. But I think I can handle it on my own. Walking in pride and arrogance, not wanting to get prayer, not wanting to lay down the plate. So we conceal and we cover our own selves, which gives the enemy more access because we didn't give it to God. We didn't cover it under the blood. We covered it up on our own. We made our own way out. And we know that that didn't work. How many of us in here have created our own way out and then found out it didn't work? It didn't work. Why? Because it was not covered under the blood. We did it our way and it didn't work. So what do we have to do? We have to go back to God and tell God to cover. When we're covered by the blood, everything we do is covered. Our sin, our poor judgment, our attitude, our finances, our relationships. Jesus paid it all by the shedding of his blood. The sin, the sickness, the disease. Isaiah 53 and 6 says, we all we like sheep have gone astray and we have turned everyone to his own way and the Lord have laid upon him the iniquity of us all. When we become uncovered, we open ourselves to the enemy trafficking in and out of our lives. The enemy will traffic when I'm over here. 
But when I'm covered, he can't traffic in and out of my life because the blood covers that portal that I open, that gap that I open, that crack that I open because of the sin in my life that's covered. The enemy can't infiltrate the threshold. But when I'm over here and I'm uncovered, the enemy can traffic in and out. And we are not sustained. When we're uncovered, we have a momentary lapse of judgment over a piece of fruit. What are we eating that's causing us to be uncovered from the blood of Jesus? Hallelujah. So we have to be covered. And we can't afford to lose our identity. Because when we're uncovered, we don't know who we are in God. So we'll follow anything. I'm going to close out here. I'm just going to pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, we thank you this morning for the blood that covers if you could stand to your feet. Lord, we thank you today, oh God. Lord, that we are covered by the blood of Jesus, oh God. That the blood covers us, oh God. The blood heals us, oh God. The blood delivers us, oh God. The blood sets us free. Lord, that we will not be people that walk uncovered, oh God, by the blood, oh God. We declare today, oh God, that we will not fall prey, oh God, and listen to the voices, oh God. The only voice, oh God, that we hear is your voice, oh God, on today, oh God. So circumcise our ears to hear you accurately, God. Circumcise our hearts, oh God. Purify us, oh God. Lord, that your word, oh God, would be upon us, oh God. That your word, oh God, would saturate us on today, oh God. Lord, that we would not begin to cover up our sins, oh God. Cover up our wrongdoing, oh God. But Lord, that we would allow the blood to cover. The blood to cover. Begin to ask God to cover you in the blood. Every situation, every circumstance, every problem that you have up before him. Put it under the blood today. God said, put it under the blood. The blood, the blood, the blood, the blood. Too long, we've been walking uncovered and unaware. And God says today we are responsible. We are responsible to give everything to him, to put it under the blood. We cannot allow the things we entertain to pull us away from God, to pull us away from our covering. Come on, let's stir ourselves up right there. Lord, let this atmosphere, O oh God, bring change, O oh God. Let this atmosphere, O oh God, that you created, O oh God, bring change and healing, O oh God. Deliverance to us, O oh God. Oh, God. Oh, God. We thank you for the blood of Jesus. We thank you for the cleansing power. We thank you for the blood that makes us whole, the blood that keeps us, 
the blood. Hallelujah. Continue to pray in your heavenly language. Continue to pray in your heavenly language. When we come under the covering of the blood, we should expect something to happen. We should expect a change. We should expect something new. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Amen. It's a privilege to be covered in the blood. Hallelujah. I thank and praise God for the blood of Jesus. I thank and praise God for the word of God that just went forth from our very own Elder uh, Valerie. Amen. It is our privilege, amen, to be children of the kingdom of God that have the benefit of the blood of Jesus. Amen. I said that's a benefit. That's a privilege to have the blood of Jesus. I just thank and praise God for the word of God that went forward. I am before you to do our offering and our communion today. Amen. Our giving scripture is Deuteronomy 8.18. I'm going to read it in your hearing. And it said, but thou shall remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that giveth thee power to get wealth, that he may establish his covenant which he has sworn unto thy fathers as it is this day. It says, as we remember the Lord our God. Amen. We have to remember the Lord our God in our giving. And we have several ways that we can give on today. 